Anderson. I am a hundred years old and I will be 101 in October. My family has lived in Walla Walla, Washington, 64 years. My background was Presbyterian. So I want to go to the First Presbyterian Church downtown. So we went to church that Sunday and uh, and everything, we just, we were all very impressed, especially Kathy, apparently, because we came home and I turned to her and I said, okay, where are we going next Sunday? And she said, without um, taking a breath, she just said, well, we don't have to, we already found it. And I thought, so much for church shopping. So that was the beginning of being in Walla Walla. My name is Mary Bundy. I began work on the last Monday of the month of July in 1976. And so that's when I started coming to the church and Dr. Ed Wright, who was the pastor then, retired and moved away. So we had about six months of pulpit supply and then we had Dr. Jim Bell come for an interim year while we were trying to find a new pastor. And Dr. Bell was the one that encouraged me to join the church. So in January of 77, I did that. I always park my car down at the end of the Christian Education Building by the kitchen. And then you have to walk the long hallway up to the office. And every day that I did that, there was, there was never a day that I thought to myself, gee, I wish I didn't have to walk down this hall and go to work today. Every day, I said to God, thank you for letting me have this job. Thank you for letting me have this job. What is my name? Yes. Helen Lucille Isaac Stern. Stern for 75 years in August. Well, I moved to Walla Walla in June of 1951 with my husband, John, and my 19-month-old son, Gregory. So uh, I had belonged to the First Baptist Church and we were married in that church. And John belonged or, to the Lincoln Heights Church in Spokane. So I kind of, when we came to Walla Walla, we thought we'd just kind of check around the different churches and find one that we would like together instead of going two different ways. So that's when we finally went around and decided that First Presbyterian Church was going to be our church. Reverend Thompson was the minister then and my husband liked him so much. I don't know, he he would go in and just drop in and visit him sometimes. I think he had been a former basketball player or something. My name is John Reese. Well, we got out of the service out of the United States Air Force uh, in uh, September of 1958, came to Walla Walla where I had a job lined up and um, uh, we started attending uh, Then, the First Presbyterian Church uh, was the name. We started attending uh, because of our friends. We had two small children at that point, and we liked the church, and so we joined in the fall of of 1958. Well, I think I look back on it, and the two longest-serving ministers were Andy Jarvis, who came here in about... 76, and that's when our oldest boy graduated, and his girls graduated from high school about that time, so they were very good friends, and they all went to Whitworth to school, and that was an interesting experience. They would be riding uh, up to Whitworth with each other very often, and so the Jarvises and us were very good friends because of our children. My name is Don Dedele. I came to Walla Walla in December of 1980. We've attended the Walla Walla Church since 1986. 
Well, uh, at that time, uh, the, the pastor here was Andy Jarvis. And Andy came out to our home and visited uh, my wife, Janet, and myself. And we agreed to, to come and, to the church for a time or two. And uh, we liked it, so we stayed. Well, Andy was, uh, he occupied a special place in this, in the congregation it's amongst the older members. He was very congenial, uh, comfortable with people. And he had a great sense of humor. Uh, you know, he was a very uh, pastoral figure. My name is Ethel Giard. And me, my husband and I came here in 1976, the centennial year. After attending the church since 1980, in 1983, I began volunteering in the church. The first time that I came into the church, we had been uh, church shopping. So I was very comparing and wondering if this is a friendly church. And I found that it was a friendly church. And Carmen McCaw was the one, when we were walking out of the sanctuary, Carmen McCaw was the one who asked us, well, you have to come into community time and meet some people. So we did. What was Carmen's involvement at church? Well, she was always the first one, not the first one, but one of the first to greet new people and introduce them to others and get them started and that was more or less her mission. She served as president, I think, of the Women's Association and worked with them. And she's an ordained elder also, served on the pastor nominating committee for, not for the pastoral relations committee at Presbytery. And when the, say for instance, the Kennewick Church was calling a new minister, why she would attend the meetings of the pastor nominating committee got to the point where I could just, felt like just all I had to do was back the car out of the garage and kick the tires and head off for Kennewick. I usually went over with her and drove her over and drove her back, but uh, she was quite active that way. Uh, she was a team player. Uh, I was very fortunate to have 72 years with her. I have three daughters that have all been married in that church. And Kathy's, was simpler, but, and Vicki was, uh, didn't like the big splash. And so her, she was married in a chapel in a very lovely service. And Peggy, the youngest, she, she wanted the big deal. So she was married in that gorgeous sanctuary with the long gown and six attendants and the whole works. I remember Margaret Rozier was in the Women's Association, and uh, I think Ruth Allen was planning on, her husband was planning on retiring and moving away, and so uh, Ruth had been the coordinator for several years, and so they kind of broke me in on it. And that also was when the Receptions were done in the basement with the kitchen right handy. And Ruth used to bring a table. She would find a table that she liked at home that she'd take down to make the reception so nice. She would take some of her linens maybe. And she always made the receptions down that basement look very nice. <laughs> So when she left, then I took over, and the new building was built about that time, so I didn't take any of my furniture. <laughs> well, my experience over the years has been that it's been a welcoming church, welcoming new people, and uh, of course every pastor has a little different way they go about their their ministry, so it's been interesting over the years. And I also think that the, the church has always had good uh, pastoral leadership, which piv is pivotal. How does that affect the community, having good pastoral leadership? Um, you mean the church community? The church community. Yeah. Well, I think that's what keeps people coming. If that falters, or if you go with a, a period of time, 
And we did, after Pastor Andy left, uh, we went for a period of time without a regular pastor. And that hurts the church substantially. Yeah. And he, I mean, you have to have a spiritual leader. I think one of the most challenging times for this church was hiring a pastor uh, after we'd had pastor that had been here a long time. Uh, so, and that's always difficult in any kind of job. If, you have, if you're replacing the person who had done the wonderful job for six years, 10 years, 40 years, you're going to be looked at differently. And then usually the person after that gets along fine. We had that situation where we had a pastor that had been here a long time, beloved by the congregation, and um, the person that we hired right after him had a hard time. And it was difficult for the church to get through, but it's still standing here. I think an interesting point about the office and the pastor is that people sometimes don't realize the diversity of demand that is placed on a pastor. Um, our current pastor, uh, Albert Gillen, I have seen days when he would um, come to the church in the morning to hold a memorial service for a baby that died. And then in the afternoon, I've seen him do a wedding, and then in the evening come back to session to be the moderator of session. That's a hard day. And we have an Albert now, of course, he's a very, very special person, and so is Lori. And their boys, they have fabulous boys. His, his wife was a good friend of, the, of a wife that ser served in his church, and it was through that source that we heard about Albert. And we worked out an arrangement for the Gillens to come here. Their children were pretty small then but we worked out an arrangement for them to come to this church, and, and it's been a, a very good thing for this church to have them present. Uh, I've been impressed right from the start, and his Bible lessons, or Sunday church school lessons have been like almost being in a seminary yourself has been. The staff could come in on, on a morning when uh, there had been some group meeting in the evening before, and had used up all of our flavored coffee cream. And we would be standing there fussing at the coffee pot. And lo and behold, the Lord would have placed it upon Albert's heart to go to the store and get flavored coffee cream before he came. And so here he would come down the hall, and we were all rejoicing because he had the coffee cream. <laughs> Well, well, was Albert a part of those meetings in the evening? That <laughs> yeah, he would have been. Yeah, he would have been. Mm -hmm. My name is Dennis Ray, and uh, I've been a mem member here for uh, years, and uh, I've attended here all my life. My first uh, service in the church was uh, helping with the youth um, when I was when I came was done with college and came back to to. Home. Uh, Rich Latta was here at that time, and I think uh, it was just uh, great to uh, to help with them. So, and I enjoyed being a member of the church. Uh, we both felt that it was uh, doing a good job of of uh, appealing to both our children and to us. And that was important that it did, did seem to appeal to the children. And they all grew up in this church. Did they have a good experience here? Yes, they had a good experience. In fact, I don't think we would have been here if they had not had a good experience. They had good experiences. And they had good, good experiences up at Camp Gormley, the camp, Presbyterian Church camp up in the Cascade Mountains. They had good experiences there, too. I first volunteered in the Sunday School Department. I had fun. I loved doing it. 
I did it with the twos and threes and the fours and threes and four-year-olds when my children were in that in grade school. So I enjoyed it a lot. I even took kids camping at Fort Walla Walla one summer for it. And that was crazy of me to do because it's the time that the um, cottonwoods were dropping all of their cotton all over the place and we were in tents. So don't do that. I took over from Elaine Reese who was in charge of the Sunday School program, kindergarten, or little babies through high school. And I took over for her, and um, I have worked and volunteered in the church ever since. Well, I think, I think Janet served as an elder for one term, and I think I served for two different terms. What roles did you serve in as, this, as a part of the session? Well, I think most everything except president of the, of the corporation. I've never served in that capacity, but I've done most everything else. Uh, between my wife and myself, we've, we've pretty well covered the waterfront. As this church uh, uh, honors and believes in having a good education in your spiritual leader, and we've always had... Um, classes behind people that wanted to be in ministry and supported them through the presbytery uh, to go to seminary and become ministers. And I, I can think of several real quickly here. John Mitchell and David Kegley and Stephen Hess and Greg Grable and Danny Rees um, turned out to be wonderful pastors. And they're spread throughout the United States. So this church on this corner has a little piece of uh, supporting and uh, ministry all over the United States because they uh, held these young men up and got them through the process to become pastors. And I think that we as a church congregation are blessed by that. This church has sponsored a, quite a few people into becoming ministers or missionaries or one thing or another, and, and that's been, I've enjoyed watching that. I personally can testify to the help that the church has been. I think some of you can recall the really bad flood we had in 1996 which, uh, <laughs> that was some deal. I lived in town then, and my parents lived it out in our house in the country, and I heard a knocking on my window in my apartment in the middle of the night, and I got up to see what was going on, and it was my mother and father <laughs> who had had to flee their house because it was being flooded, which left a really lot of mess. <laughs> and then uh, the church helped. Um, I can recall seeing Vern Kegley, who at the time was president of Baker Boyer Bank, uh, standing in the middle of the basement floor, digging mud, because he had taken the day off. And they had a, they created a chain of people that came out of the basement, up the steps, and out to the backyard, uh, so where they could sort out things that needed to go to the dump, and things that uh, might possibly be salvaged. And they would just hand that stuff over and over and over to each other to get it out. I, I, and Tinsley Lovejoy was there too. She had taken her teacher day. I guess they get one free day. And she had taken her day to do that. And we had a, a fleet of pickups there. People would bring their pickup and we would load them up and they would head off to the dump. Uh, and we would put in another truck and just kept doing that. And the ladies of the church made a picnic lunch for the workers to come and eat, and then they all went back to work, bless their hearts. Laura had, uh, uh, had a stroke with one of our kids, and the outpouring of love that came from here was a big thing for, for her and myself. You know, you'd see Christ's love there. <laughs> 